I'm honestly so embarrassed right now because <laughs> I don't even want to talk about this. What would be your ideal timeline to have a baby? I seriously love these people and I'm thinking this is going to be the one. I had a feeling you'd come back and save me. What's up guys and happy Saturday from my sty. Yes, I woke up this morning with a beautiful sty on my eye. It is so painful. And <laughs> my recurring pimple. Yeah, I first got this pimple like over a month ago. I even vlogged about it. It's one of those like deep pimples that actually hurt. It healed, it all healed, and then it popped back up again. It's literally the same pimple. I was just doing some Google research as I do, and it said something about like the full pimple didn't, I don't know. It basically, it's been there underneath my skin even when I thought it was gone, so. As you can tell, I'm in a fantastic mood right now. It's Saturday, it's gonna be great, but I really am. I'm going to a concert tonight, I'm very excited. But you know when like, I don't know about you guys, like when I get ready, in order for me to like my finished look, I have to already have thought I looked good before I put on makeup. Like I have to look in the mirror and be like, good, good, like you look good. And then I put on makeup to just like accentuate everything. But if I look in the mirror and I'm just not feeling it, oh my God, all I see is this dye, this is disgusting. Then no matter how much foundation or concealer or whatever I put on, I'm just not gonna, I'm just not gonna feel it. Let us see, I'm giving you guys the amazing before with the sty and the pimple and the bad attitude. And ready? This is the after. Makeup is done. You can still see the style a little bit. Like, it's not that noticeable. You wouldn't look at me and be like, oh my gosh, she has a disease. But it freaking hurts still. I hate styles so much. And then hair is like almost done. I still need to give it like a little shake, you know? It's still kind of wet from hairspray. As for my outfit, this is what I am thinking. I love like laying it out like it's a person. Black top white jeans, black shoes, and then we've got a nice little pink purse for pop of color, and whenever you go to concerts, they need to be like small, I think like less than 12 by 12, so we'll see if I actually like the way this looks because I feel like I never actually end up wearing the first outfit I try on. Hallelujah, I actually ended up wearing the outfit I picked out, minus the shoes, those boots looked so bad with this because these are actually crop jeans, I didn't realize that. So shoes are from BSW, and jeans are from Abercrombie & Fitch. The top is actually from New Look, which I picked up when I was shopping in Ireland and visiting my family. It's like a European store. It's a little bit low cut for my liking, but hey, sometimes you just gotta go for the gold. By the way, I know that is my most overused saying ever. I'm sorry guys, I can't help it. I just love it. As for the jewelry, I feel like I gotta go for the hoops. This is such a big hoops outfit. I'm just gonna keep it real with you guys. From a distance, you know, they look great. You guys wanna see how rusted these are? These are another Target find. I think I got these like, I don't know, six years ago. I understand, I really, this is why you guys have probably noticed in these past like few vlogs, kind of since quitting my job, I've been doing a lot of shopping. You're probably like, this girl's going crazy, like what the heck? I kid you not. I have not shopped in so long. Like, and it's not even like a good thing. It's like to the point where, I don't know, like I just, I feel like I have a different threshold. Like for example, you see these, eh, these wedges? The reason I got them is because when Zach and I started dating, so I got them three years ago, he made a comment about these other wedges that I was wearing, like, oh, like those are really worn. They were these silver wedges that were peeling. I had gotten them, I think like my freshman year of high school because feet don't grow. So that's why like I never have like a need to buy more because I'm just like, all right, like they're good enough. But I was really embarrassed when he like made a comment <laughs> about my shoes. But like in this new era of life, we don't got time for rusted earrings, except for now because I this is all I have. But eventually we're gonna upgrade and we're gonna get new ones, okay? It's so crazy though, guys. Like I don't wanna feel like a broken record, but I just wanna keep this journey like open and honest with no longer being a TV news reporter, like what's happening after quitting my job. I truly am living a different life. Like the day after I quit my job or since leaving my job, like my last day, I truly woke up a different person. Like I woke up a different human in a different life. Everything changed for the better. Like. I don't even know what to say. For example, like normally on Saturdays, I'm not even looking forward to going out because I'm just like, I just want to get sleep. Like I'm tired. Friday nights, no, of course I'm not going out. Like as a reporter, I mean, back in my old life. And now I'm the one, I spontaneously booked us Marin Morris concert tickets last night. We're not like big Marin Morris fans, but I'm like, let's go to a concert. And this is like my favorite venue in Cincy for concerts, the Icon Music Center, the outside stage. And it's like, I have the energy. I have the time. I have the, just everything. So it's actually five, seven, ooh, it's 517. I wanted to leave here at five because the concert's at eight. And I want to just get drinks beforehand, do a little dining. And even though I have a sty, I'm happy. And honestly, I'm gonna have to like get drunk to get rid of this pain.
dinner with my vegan fiance. He's newly vegan. He's been shaming me for weeks for eating chicken. Let's see what he ends up ordering. It's gonna be great. The Impossible Burger looks great. Yep, we'll see. Zach the vegan ordering ribs. Perfect. Well, this pretty much sums up how the past few days have been. Just dead flowers symbolizing my dead life. Guys, my sty is on another level. We're not gonna show that. We're not gonna focus on it. Instead, we're gonna focus on the only thing that is causing me happiness right now, Sleepy Bee, which if you live in Cincinnati, you have to get. They have like just the best menu ever. This is the beekeeper chicken sandwich with roasted sweet potatoes. Zach got the pulled chicken sandwich, roasted sweet potatoes, happiness. And he's wearing his hospital gown. <laughs> that has gotta be one of the funniest comments I've ever read. Someone, Zach, with, Zach can you please just stand up? Just, just just, give us a little stand. Zach was standing up and he was wearing pattern shorts as well. And they kind of blended into each other and someone was like, thought he was wearing a hospital gown. But yeah, guys, it's just, it hasn't been great, but this is, this is about to make me a lot happier. Oh man, these past few days have been awful. I feel like I've not been a human because that sty was no joke. That is the worst sty I have ever gotten and I should not have caked my face with makeup to go to the concert. As we were at the concert, I felt like my eye was just gonna explode. I don't know if you guys have ever had styes like that, which by the way, it's not pink eye, it's not like contagious. It's basically just a, like a clogged oil gland and then it creates that disgusting <laughs> look. So I have not been wearing makeup the past couple of days and also i don't i don't think i talked about this on here but i'm dealing with a pretty bad shoulder injury in both my shoulders i joined that burn boot camp but i think i just went too fast too soon like i'm truly starting from square one when it comes to building strength yes i run all the time and i have built up <laughs> okay ready guys i'm saying i built up endurance i actually feel out of breath right now from talking and walking i don't know why but no like i built up endurance but the thing is like i've neglected muscles like i just haven't done it and like i feel like i haven't done it because i have no muscles it's like a catch 22 but needless to say i hurt myself working out like it didn't happen in the moment i wasn't like doing something where i'm like ah it's just overuse and then my right shoulder it's been in agony my left shoulder then i started using like my my left arm more to overcompensate now that one's hurt like so it's just it's just sucked i feel like i've just been like a blob and then Zach is still not feeling good. You guys know he has like a mystery illness, which I don't really want to get too into just because we don't know what's going on. But finally, I decided to wake up, put on some makeup, actually wear like a legitimate outfit. I've just been in like my, like not pajamas, but like sweatpants, clothing things. And it's been good because I've gotten a lot of editing done, but I always said when I work for myself, when I do, you know, this whole YouTube thing, like I don't just want my days to be me staying in my pajamas. Like I like waking up, doing my hair, doing my makeup. Like it just makes me feel better. And these past few days I've just felt like, the, I know I overuse this word guys, but disgusting. That's just, <laughs> that's just how I felt. So I'm actually going to the shared workspace in my apartment complex right now to do a little bit of work. It's just nice to get out of the apartment and have like a different, I don't know, backdrop, like it just feels good. So I'm really glad we have that. And hopefully that'll just kind of improve my mindset. I feel like when we first signed our lease at this apartment complex, I really didn't even think twice about this shared workspace setup because obviously I had my reporter job and even like for Zach, he was working in the office, but with so many people working from home now, this is so nice. Like, let me see, is anyone here? No one is here. Like, I'm so surprised that this isn't more crowded. Like, it's just so nice to get out of your apartment. Obviously, we have over here, like, they have this conference table. Then you have some pool, whatever game that is. Bill, I think it starts with a B. I have no idea. Uh, all this, TVs. And then you have this cute little lounge set up if you want to watch, like, a show or a sporting event, whatever it is. Like, this is awesome. So yeah, it, it really just helps break it up, like the monotony of being in the apartment, even though I feel like I've been out and about a lot lately. Last time I worked over there, maybe I shall try over here this time, just switch it up. And just looking at the pool right now, like this is such a tease. I wanna be there so badly. And oh my gosh, I didn't even tell you guys why I can't just go to the pool because I am on deadline today, which feels so weird after leaving my job as a reporter. 
I'm technically a reporter again for the day. So the backstory on this is that a couple of vlogs ago, I told you guys that I was being interviewed for Insider by Michaela, who's one of my subscribers. And it was just, it was such a cool experience. And she was interviewing me on the topic of why I'm not choosing bridesmaids for my wedding. And when I first made the announcement on YouTube, there were quite a few people who were messaging me saying this was like an awful decision. I was gonna regret it. Some people were actually nice. Like they were just like, hey, I think you're gonna regret this so much. Like don't do it. But then there were people who were saying this was ridiculous. My decision was selfish and I just wanted to hog the spotlight all for myself. I didn't want other people to like be there on my big day with me. I just wanted it to be just me because I'm egotistical. Like it was crazy. And so I did that article. Little did I know, like it went, like it, it went to all different uh, platforms. Like so many of you guys messaged me saying you saw it on the homepage of Yahoo News. Then it was in like The Sun and just all of these like big name publications. Then a few days ago, a woman from Newsweek who was one of the editors there asked if I would be able to talk to her about the whole thing and then she could do an article. But the whole thing was, this is like the first person pieces on Newsweek. I think it's called like My Turn is what the whole section is. And she explained that she would interview me and then based on the interview, she would ghost write a first person story for me. So it would say my name, it would be in first person as in like I'm Clancy, da 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 da, have my name on it, but someone else would be writing it for me. And like that just, did not sit well with me. I mean, it's not like I wasn't like offended. Like I wasn't like, how dare you? Like I understand why they do that and it's genius because first person accounts, I feel like sometimes like it's just more interesting than someone else saying it. But as someone who's actually like a writer, like I'm not a writer, but I love writing. I'm a former reporter. To have someone else write something for me and then put my name on it, like it feels like fraud. Like if this is like my career or like something I'm really passionate about, like, I was just like, I don't think I can do this. And Newsweek is a big name. Like, I wanted to do it, but I was just like, I, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. So I emailed her back being like, hey, like, I'm a former reporter. I love writing. If it's okay with you, I'll actually write the piece, which honestly is like saving her time and work and energy. Like, she's having someone else just do it for her. And then she edits it, of course. And so she said, yeah. She said she can't pay me for it, so this is just, I'm getting zero dollars. It's gotta be somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 words, and it's just all about my experience of choosing not to have bridesmaids and the reaction it got. So that's why I came here. I really, when I'm writing, I need concentration. For the record, my parents and my brother always thought I was just trying to be difficult when I was younger, trying to write different things for school if my brother was playing the guitar. I just couldn't do it. And they always thought I was just trying to be like a brat <laughs> or whatever, but it, I, I truly cannot write with outside noise. And my big secret, because I always had to work in a newsroom or with other people, obviously, I put my earphones in and I listened to River Flows In You, the like hour long version or five hour version. And it just keeps like, it, there's no words, but it's just like almost like background noise for me. So yeah, I'm really excited to like get back into writing. Like I feel like I'm like, whoo, like I'm on deadline. I told her I'd be done with it by the end of the day and forward it to her and everything. <laughs> This is so weird. I just looked up and the noon news is on. This is obviously not my station. This is channel five, if I zoom out a little bit. But normally in my past life, I would possibly be reporting right now. I say possibly because I wasn't always in the noon. And honestly, when I first started working at Local 12, I was in the noon four times a week. So like four out of the five times I was in the noon. And as a morning reporter, the worst thing you can hear is when your news director or your producer says, Clancy, you're live at noon, because it just makes your day that much longer. Especially, I've been live at noon an hour, an hour and a half away before, and that means you're not getting off on time because we work until 12.30 and you do the math. It's obviously just uh, not an ideal situation. So being in the noon, mm, it's just, it, it always sucks. But toward the end of my career, my time at Local 12, I was almost never in the noon because I kind of just like did my own thing and they expected us to like work ahead, like to have my story finished for the next day. So how can I do both kind of that type of thing? But I actually just finished writing my article. It took me a couple of hours actually. I mean, this was, this was a long one. I forgot how long 1200 words is, a thousand to 1200 words. Like it, I, oh my God, it doesn't even look that long. Okay, I look like such a, loser for complaining, <laughs> but it is like when you're typing it, I don't know. All I know is I got to like, 
I don't know, here, and I put it in a word counter thinking I was done, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not even halfway. So, feeling good about it. It felt really freaking good just to write again. Like, I love writing about topics that interest me. For example, like, I wrote every day as a TV news reporter because I wrote my web script, but that's like a web story for a news that like it's it just doesn't interest me. This was so cool doing a first person account of my thoughts, my feelings. So yeah, it'll be interesting when they edit it, the changes they may make, we shall see. But whew, that felt good. I can close the laptop now. So over the last couple of months, I have not been able to eat homemade salad for lunch because it actually gives me the gag reflex. Like I was just so not feeling it. And I decided to switch up the ingredients a bit and I feel like this is kind kind of an elite salad, if I do say so myself. We've got the romaine lettuce, the cucumbers, tomatoes, grilled chicken. We've also got avocado, some grapes, chickpeas, and then to top it all off, balsamic vinaigrette dressing, guys. I'm kind of feeling like a chef, and I'm just trying to get back on my salad game because it's such a classic lunch, but it's just, it's hard. Lunch is like one of those meals that I just cannot, for the life of me, Perfect. I have decided to have myself a little pool afternoon. It is beautiful out and this is like the first true book I'm gonna be reading in so many months because you guys know I'm obsessed with my Kindle, but my friend Lindsay lent this to me. It's called In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. I have read another Ruth Ware book before and I loved it. So I'm excited about this one and I'm excited just like for the experience of holding a book. I'm not kidding, I have not done this in so long. So I just started it, I'm on page 37. And yeah, this is just, this is so perfect guys. Like I, I never want summer to end. I got the goods. You guys know what it is, fusion. I'm pretty sure I didn't even need to tell you that. And Zach and I are now going to our friend's house to meet their baby for the first time. Uh, you're not gonna get milk out of that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I want to show you guys a phenomenon that happens quite often at my apartment complex. People will order food, like this is Chipotle like, from last night, and then they'll just never get it. Like it's almost like they forget about it, and I have no idea how that happens. Like if I order food, I am counting down the seconds till it comes. Like I have no idea how you just forget. So that's a disturbing thing that <laughs> I came upon this morning. And yes, it is a bike day because of my shoulders. I've just been doing the indoor bike with the Kindle. Reading, wait, what do I call it? Learning and burning or reading and riding. And by the way, I should add, this is the same book I was reading yesterday, hardcover at the pool, but or not hardcover, but just the actual copy. And I just got it on my Kindle, went to chapter nine, and I'm gonna read it on my Kindle for the bike. Cause I just, I thought doing a bike in an actual book might be hard. So that's what we're doing. I would say that was a success. I have no idea. I guess it's like my sports bra, I don't get any sweat. But then here where my sports bra isn't here, We've got the sweat. Still here. I'm back home, I'm showered in my robe. This is seriously the best purchase I've ever made. Like this thing is gonna take up half a suitcase when we travel, I might have to take it. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do because obviously we really need to pack lightly or as lightly as possible. Everyone keeps asking me like, how much do you plan on bringing? Are you just gonna wear like the same shirt every day? I don't know. I'm bringing as much as I can fit, but obviously in one car we can't fit that much. And also we're planning on bringing things like the air fryer, like, Zach's computers even, but actually I want to speak with Zach because yesterday we met our friends Shelby and Tanner's new baby Cooper. He was so cute, like it was so weird holding a living being that is that small. And Zach, I would like to know, have you been hit with baby fever? <laughs> no, I have not. You're not? At all? Have you been hit with baby fever after what we heard? Oh, okay, so Tanner and Shelby, I feel like one of the reasons I love them so much is they're so honest and real. I feel like a lot of people like have a baby give birth and they're just like, oh, it's perfect. Like I've dreamed of this, this is great. They're just so real and they're like, this has not been easy. I feel like Shelby wouldn't mind me saying like, her labor, she had to have an emergency C-section. That's not, like, that's traumatizing. I feel like we hear C-sections all the time, so it just feels so normalized. Like, they're cutting into your stomach. She said she could actually feel them like pull, like as they were like, pulling her like stomach like she felt she like jerked forward because it was like the force of all of that no i mean it definitely did not sound um easy pleasant overall the experience so <laughs> well the giving birth, doing well. the giving birth experience obviously like they love well, yeah. but yeah i mean it's not even been easy he doesn't sleep much at night and whatever else but it seems like it's hopefully only gonna get easier from here <laughs> <laughs> So like, no baby fever at all? Not on my side, how about you? Like, I just would love to have a little one, but I'm also very realistic in the sense of like, I never but wanna- But you really do not want a little one. Right I, 
Well, also, I'm not like a naturally maternal person. Like not that, like I think I'll, I think I'll be a great mom, but like, I'm not the type of person, like I'm not like a baby person, right? Like I'm not like, oh my gosh, like hand over the little one. Like I naturally like don't relate to baby. <laughs> yeah, you relate to baby. I just don't relate to them. I've just never been a baby person. You are a baby. What would be your ideal timeline to have a baby? Two years. <gasps> That's so crazy because I feel like two, if I think about two years ago, that feels like yesterday. So guys, two years from now, we could have a baby. That's so weird to think about. Today, I'm actually gonna be going against my philosophy in life because normally I am a work now, play later kind of person, but today we're gonna be playing now and working later. And it's not my choice. Basically laying out at the pool yesterday was the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Like I've really not been going to the pool this summer, which is such a waste, like we're paying for it. So I really wanted to go to the pool today, but I have a Zoom meeting at 4 p.m. today with a potential YouTube management agency. I know this has been going on for a while, but I really, really, really just like want to, I don't know, pick the right person and make sure it's a good fit for both of us. And like, so yeah, it's just, it's taking a while, but I don't just want to go with anyone. And a lot of the agencies are based in LA, so there's a time difference. And so like a 1 p.m. call for them is 4 p.m. for me. And then I wouldn't be able to go to the pool after doing my work today. So I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna go to the pool, maybe for like an hour or two, probably probably like an hour and a half maybe, lay by the pool, read a book, and it is going to be fan-freaking-tastic. But I'm not gonna lie, it kind of stresses me out. I hate working like this. Like that's why Nightside is one of the options for TV news reporters. You can work morning, day, night. Oh my goodness, I filled in Nightside just a handful of times. It is just the worst. And even when I worked at Victoria's Secret, I was always on like the end shift, the closing shift. Oh my gosh, like, cause you just wake up and like to have to like do things throughout your day, I feel like in the back of my mind, I'm always like, but you have work, you have work, you have work. Like I can't actually enjoy the things I want to do. Now I can, because this is like just a Zoom call. It's not like I'm like dreading a, you know, a nine hour shift, but oh, I just, I like, I love getting things done. Obviously though, the times are out of my control and I'm using this Elta MD Clear, if I can focus, sunscreen. I love this stuff. It just feels so freaking light. Like I wear it under my makeup even, but obviously I'm not wearing makeup to the pool, but I'm gonna go to the post office. I have to mail out some Poshmark orders. So I'm doing some work this morning, but not the bulk of what I need to do. So I'm so freaking excited to read by the pool. It also felt good to have like a legitimate book in my hands. I liked it. But not enough for me to just switch to hardcover because a lot of people say like, oh my gosh, like you have to just switch to like the regular book, like nothing beats that. Listen, I read like a book a week. I don't have the money and the time to have hardcover books because they're not, you know, the physical copy. It's just so easy. I hook up my Kindle to my library and I get them in a second. And then as for my cute little cover up, this is actually from Target. I'm obsessed. Oh wow, this is not even. I'm obsessed though, because it's just so freaking like light and comfy and I like these colors. Oh my goodness, I have the entire pool <laughs> to myself. This is crazy. I'm not complaining. I think I'm gonna go over here because of the direction of the sun. These are all things I've learned from Zach. And honestly, these are things I'm gonna miss so much when we buy a home. I feel like I've just been putting off buying a home for so long and like finally it's like time to buy a home. I'm like, let's travel. Like, it's just, there's so much that you don't get. First of all, it's like, it's we're probably not gonna buy a brand new home, just budget and all. And you don't have like this huge pool. We have another pool. We have two gyms here, like the common areas, like, these are all things you don't get at a, with, with, with a home and I just, I hate that. I don't know, I just honestly do not feel ready for that stage of life, which is crazy because I'm 26. It's like, I feel like I should be, but I'm just not. Even like the whole baby thing, I, I just don't have that desire. I feel like there's so many girls who, especially on YouTube, they're like, oh my God, like I need a baby now and they're like 21. I, not me, like I, I, I hope it, hits me and I have that desire. And Zach and I both want kids. Like that's not even, that's not even a question. I, I want kids, but I'm really content right now not having them. And the idea of having them in two years just feels way too soon and I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to, we're actually going back to the, oh, in case you're wondering, I was shipping out the Poshmark order. So I had to do like all of the like, pasting the shipping label and everything in my car. I had to print the slip and everything. And then we are going back to the hardcover. I just love holding this book. Oh my gosh. And let's see what page are we? Oh, okay, good. I was like, did I fold it? On page 97. This is just so magical. Like this is, I'm happy I made this decision. Play now, work later. 
I'm now returning to my spot, my happy place, Alms Park. I decided to come here to hang out, chill, and then you guessed it, take some pictures. And that's what I've been doing. I feel like most of these pictures are not coming out the best because I can show you guys over here. This dress is a very uh, interesting dress. It's from Altered State. It's huge. I mean, granted, I also think I got a bigger, like I think I got too big of a size because I've always heard with Altered State, you're supposed to possibly size up if you are in between just because it does run a little small. So I got a medium. I don't think I should have gotten a medium, but even if I did get like, even a small, I think this is just a huge dress. Like, I don't know what, like I can promise you it's just the poof, but it's definitely giving maternity. So I don't know if I'm gonna like any of those photos, honestly, but it's whatever. Cause I, I just came here just to enjoy the day too. It's like so beautiful out and this, okay, so this is Sums Park. You guys know this is where Zach and I got engaged. This actually could be a wedding venue as well. So this is like kind of like the outside area. Oh my gosh, wait. So I think, yeah, this is the exact spot we got engaged, right here. The photographer was over there by that tree. And then this could be a wedding venue where you have obviously this beautiful upper section. And then if we go in here, this is like, I guess, I don't know, like where like the cocktail ceremony could be. I don't know, but you could see like, this is like built for a bar over here. And then they even have an entire section out here as well. But you can imagine the reason we immediately said we couldn't do this, it's small. So you'd have to have probably like less than a hundred people. Maybe you could get away with doing a little more than that, but we just, we didn't think we would be small enough for that. And then also it's hot, okay? So there are no, um, fans i guess you could purchase like huge ones if you wanted to but on a hot day there's only so much a fan can do like there's not air conditioning is what i meant to say so yeah we kind of rolled that one out because i i don't want my guests to be uncomfortable and ours like will get married outside but it's not entirely outside it's just kind of like a quick 10 minute marriage then we can have the cocktail ceremony outside if the weather allows and then it's all inside in the air conditioning for my guests. Oh my goodness, guys. I just finished the Zoom with this one talent management agency. Is that redundant talent management agency? I probably just did not get that phrase right, but it went so well. I seriously love these people and I'm thinking this is gonna be the one. Like, ah, I don't know. This is like so exciting. I don't, I, I'm sorry, it just, I went so long in the whole TV news industry being so removed from this part of the YouTube world. And it's just like, I always just looked at other people who got these opportunities and got to do these things. And I'm like, what is life? Like I can, like it just, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm rambling. I'm, I think I'm like not coherent right now, but I'm just so excited. Like I, I just, I don't know. I'm just really excited. I'm not saying the company just yet, just because I don't want to like say anything until things are final, but I just felt really good about that. Meanwhile, for the first time in like months, Zach is working out. He's gonna try to at least. He's got a jump rope, he's got the old equipment. He's just got some stuff. How have you been feeling? And I'm actually asking you this real because I feel like I haven't asked you since this morning. I literally asked him like 72 times a day, but I haven't asked him today. She doesn't care about me. She's, yes, I do. she's doing this for the camera. Zach. She hasn't asked in weeks. Zach, yo, oh my God, are you kidding me? Oh. This is all for the YouTube. Zach. How am I doing then? You should know if you've asked. I said I, have, she go, I, said I, I haven't asked I, I, since this morning. I, she didn't ask this morning. I asked this morning and you couldn't. What did I say? You said, um, and then I said, oh, sorry. I think I asked too soon because you haven't even been up enough yet. Well, yeah, she was like, I rolled out of bed. Well, I wanted to know. <laughs> anyway, how are you feeling? I'm guessing you're feeling better. Your mood seems different. I feel a little better, yes. I still feel my side. I don't know what it, technically it is, but holistically i feel a little bit better yes so. yeah your whole mood zach like and anyone's <laughs> would but like really like it affects your whole demeanor even oh, yeah, when no. we did film our travel video remember when everyone was like zach's painting life <laughs> that was the first day you felt sick and i think it showed in the video like i think that's part of it yeah i mean maybe i'm not gonna say yes right now because then everyone would just dissect that anyways <laughs> that we're, yeah, yeah, i think clancy's trying to tell herself yeah i know i'm like actually you, was the <laughs> so you really loves me so i <laughs> i'm not gonna say yes or no to that. I certainly just want to feel better. So we're about to, uh, this could be disastrous if I go work out and then I come back and start feeling like I was. So oh. don't get your hopes up, sweetie. Yeah, I know. Thanks, sweetie. <laughs> on a less happy note, I'm honestly so embarrassed right now because <laughs> I don't even want to talk about this. You guys remember 
I don't know, what, 10 minutes ago in this vlog, I was talking about how I was writing that Newsweek article. I was so excited, my first published piece, and I'm just embarrassed. So I sent in like my version, the editor sent back some like modifications, some, not corrections, what was the word? Just like edits, okay, edits. And they were fine. There were a couple where I was just like, eh, like I wish you didn't do that, but it's okay. It's just, it's part of the creative process. What I was so embarrassed about though, is let me let me actually pull it up even though i don't want to ah yes the title of the article i'm not having any bridesmaids at my wedding the abuse i've received is shocking i am just so embarrassed because i never said those words a little thing that you might not know a little behind the scenes in the news industry the writer does not come up with the title typically it's actually the editor but the problem that i have with this is i never said these words and you put them in quotes as if I said them. Like, you, how can you just do that? And here's the thing, like she did send me back a copy. Like I saw it before it went live. It's not like she just did it, but listen, I'm not gonna be difficult. Oh shoot, it's 508, I didn't even put a potato in. Do you want me to put one in for you, Zach? Zach? Yeah? <laughs> He's a potato boy. Okay, I'm back, I'm sorry. It's a very important part of my night, getting that potato in. But anyway, I saw that this was going to be the title. I just didn't want to be difficult. I'm not gonna be difficult, like especially for this person. Like it's just, I'm not gonna do that. But I was just very embarrassed by this. Like that's so embarrassing for me to say the abuse I've received. I haven't received the abuse. And I told my mom about this. She told me that in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, which I did not watch at all, I heard something about poop, like her pooping on his bed and then I tuned out. Apparently, one of the big arguments that she made was that she never, she like wrote this article or did this article for some publication and then the title said something about abuse and she said she never, that was not her doing. Like she never did the title and that's true. Like the writer doesn't do the title, but it's so annoying. Like I understand like it's all about getting clicks. I get that of course in the industry that I'm in, even just YouTube. But like lying, like I didn't receive abuse and I'm just so embarrassed. Like I make myself sound like some sort of weird like cry baby and I'm not, okay. And I feel like I've had a bad experience with print in general because I've been interviewed for various things before. I one time had a writer totally make up my quotes, like 100% make them up and I know it because this writer didn't have a tape recorder, didn't have, like just was simply like writing down what I said how are you, that's never gonna, like you, you obviously can't transcribe every single thing. So I didn't understand that. And the quote that this person had me saying is so embarrassing and so not me. And obviously I didn't complain, I'm not gonna do that, but it was just so humiliating. Like, I'm like, I would never say that. It made me seem like egotistical and like, I don't know, but it was just embarrassing. So I'm really happy that I'm like published in Newsweek. It's gonna be like, kind of like something good to like put on my resume if I do wanna get into writing and be like, here you go but it's also just, I'm like, hey, like don't look at the title because I didn't say that. <laughs> it's funny though, because I feel like if I were to write something for Newsweek five years ago, it'd be a way bigger deal. But I've realized, and this was kind of like with me quitting my job, you don't necessarily need these big media companies to get your message across, to be heard, to be known. Like you can just do it yourself. Like for example, create your own YouTube channel, create your own vlog or blog, whatever it is. And even like when I was working at Local 12, I, like. I don't know, like I was just felt like uh, it kind of gives you an identity. And even right now, I feel like I'm searching for an identity because I don't want to be like YouTuber. So I'm like, okay, great. Like I wrote in Newsweek, like I'm a writer, like, but you can create your own thing. Like you don't need these companies to do it for you. And I'm finding like one of the things I hate is just having creative differences. For example, like some of the edits they made, I'm like, okay, like that's your opinion, but I actually would have done this. Neither is right, neither is wrong, but that's why it's so cool when you have your own thing to not have to listen to anyone else. And of course, like I always want feedback and I always want, you know, advice on certain things, but I'm realizing like I love just being able to do my own thing. And even though like I feel like I'm kind of in like this phase in my life where I'm having an identity crisis where I'm just like I don't know who I am, like I was student for my entire life, then I was TV news reporter, and now I'm what? I don't know, like maybe I'll be a writer, but it, I don't have to be writer. Like I could just be me. And my dad actually once told me like, he, he always, he said like, don't ask someone what they do for a living or it could be rude just because you don't know if someone's in between jobs. You don't know if someone isn't working. And I, I never like thought about that. Like uh, how it could be like offensive or I don't know. I just feel like we get so much of our identity in our jobs. And that's why I'm kind of in a little bit of a 
crisis. You know what, Zach? Zach just came in. He's giving me bad looks. I can't smile at my fiance. Nope, you're not allowed. Not allowed. Not with that smile. What do you do for a living? I'm a content creator. <laughs> what kind of content? YouTube videos and Instagram. I'm trying. I'm really trying to up my Insta game. I'm like, it's like a fun challenge. Like, cause I'm not good at it. It's not like a natural thing for me. So it's like fun. Like, it's like, all right, let's see if I can actually do this. <laughs> Don't. But anyway, for anyone who is out there thinking of doing a career change or just like a life change, like let's say you're in a relationship where you're like, I'm actually not that happy. Like just anything. Obviously, I'm not talking about myself, but like it could be anything. I would go for it. Set yourself up in a good spot to be able to do it. Like I said, it took me over two years. So I get that the wait can be awful, but like I hope I'm proof of the fact that like you can get on the other side and it could be good. Anyway, I don't know. I'm rambling. I need to edit this vlog because I'm starting to get a little bit behind with the sty. I wasn't able to like do a lot of stuff with content and filming. So thank you guys so much for watching as always. The support means so much. Like I love you guys so much. And my Instagram is linked down below. I'm actually going to try hard and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.